Assalamu alaikum and welcome all to Living Muslim. Have you ever been in love? I mean really in love. Have you ever had a very special guest that came over to your house that you just enjoyed their company so much so that when the time came for your guest to depart, you realized and you noticed where did my time go? And did I spend my time with my guest wisely? Well, my brothers and sisters, we're departing the greatest month of the year. And for those of you that fell in love with it, I'm sure you're already starting to feel the emotions in your heart as the last days of Ramadan are falling upon us. So to touch on this, we had stools go out onto the streets to speak to the Muslims of Sydney and ask them, how do they feel about farewelling the greatest month of the year? And what did they do with their time? And this is what he came up with. There's only a few more days to go before Ramadan departs. We're here at one of the busiest mosques in Sydney to speak to people to find out how they feel about Ramadan leaving, so um, come with me. As you can see, Hoblos, subhanAllah, there's a lot of people here um, doing it to Kev. I can, I can just see probably about 40, 50 people all sleeping now, subhanAllah. Come with me. How do you feel about, <laughs> how do you feel about Ramadan leaving us, bro? Yeah, yeah. He's crying in his bed, dude. That's how he's <laughs> crying. He's crying. <laughs> I'm upset. Tell me, why, 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 why are you upset, Habibi? Because all the relationship we leave and all of us, like, there the won't the be a connection, not much is like in Ramadan. It's been so quick and um, you cherish these days, it only comes once once a year. Um, and it's just that special feeling, that spiritual feeling that uh, we don't feel day to day basis during the year. Uh, we actually woke up this morning and said there's a few days left then. Uh, make the most of it, uh, do whatever we have to do um, to leave, leave Ramadan happy. The Atik has been very special, uh, a lot of love, a lot of brotherhood, a lot of understanding between the brothers. You're talking 300 boys in one roo under one roof, you know, it's not, not an easy uh, gig, so subhanAllah. And all the boys and everyone, like all your brothers in Islam, they all meet up in, in one place. It's a together, you eat together, you pray together, everything together, and you feel like that you have brothers in this world. I've lost, this way, this way things happen. These guys are behind the scenes that prepare the food for all the guys that are doing it to keep outside. If you miss one thing about Ramadan, what would it be? What are you going to miss about Ramadan? <laughs> Uh, probably the sweets. Really? Yeah, the salah at night, the tajjud. So sweets first, then salah at night? No, nah, the salah, but like that came to my head straight away. The black said so. The black... Honestly, if I'm going to miss one thing about, um, about Ramadan, it will be this. The un unity, the brotherhood, everyone's together. Brother, what, what are some tips you're going to use um, for yourself, inshallah, to keep steadfast after Ramadan? What are you going to be doing? Well, uh, if we could at least pray two rakat every night, make an oath that you pray two rakat of tajjud every night after Ramadan, you, well, uh, you hit levels. To tell you the truth, I haven't opened the Quran since last Ramadan. That's, a, that's the truth. If I can start by um, just reading a page or two a day or you know a few pages a week, that will be a, a step closer. Be consistent. So inshallah, just try to add that one little thing and inshallah your life will change and life becomes better inshallah. After Ramadan, what, what tends to happen, I'll speak for myself, um, because Ramadan's finished, we stop fasting and that's wrong. We should, we should, we should get back to the sunnah. We should ma fast uh, at least the three days, the white days of the month, or at least uh, Monday and Thursdays. You know what I mean? We should, we should try to do that. Thank you for that, Stuz. Joining me today in the studio are three very young and very special brothers to us all, of course. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I've got with me uh, brother Kanan, who is 25 years old. I have brother Bilal, who is 18 years old, and I have brother Yaqub, who is 15 years old. Guys, thank you very much for joining us. No, uh, brother Kanan, I wanted to ask about this blessed month. Uh, what did you do this year that was different to last Ramadan? Um, well, straight up, um, in the last Ramadans, look, I've, I've wasted a lot of time. Um, I probably haven't taken advantage of Ramadan. Um, you know, um, I haven't gone to the masjid as much as I liked. You know, kind of got sucked into to the dunya, to the world. Did you come into the month of Ramadan feeling guilty? Very guilty. Or yeah. were you just on a spiritual high? You said, you know what, I want to do the best this year. No, I just, just, I kind of feeling, feeling quite guilty. Um, you know, I didn't really take advantage of it. Yeah. Um, and um, Was that the same as your other friends though? No, not really. No? No, to be honest with you. So, so the boys used to get involved and you, and you felt like you No, were... kind of, they didn't get involved. The boys really didn't get involved that much. They kind of... All right, so, so what did you do this Ramadan? I, I kind of put my head down and I said to myself, I promised myself that, you know, I'm going to, you know, make a change. Okay. You know? 
Um, so what action did you do to ensure the change? I, I said to myself, I'm going to do Tikav, the last 10 days. Yeah. So you're spending the last 10 days in the masjid? Yeah. And how's that? Look, I, in the beginning I was really shy because I really didn't know anyone. Yeah. Um, but all the boys have been really welcoming. You know, um, it's a lot easier than, than I expected. Will you be doing it next year? Inshallah, inshallah. Uh, Bilal, of course, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, nice. What goals did you have coming into Ramadan? What goals did you have for this month? I wanted to memorize uh, one jizzah, which is 20 pages. Is there any reason why you had one jizzah in mind? Because last year I was working near the whole Ramadan. I didn't put my head down as much as I did this year. Right. I didn't, you know, memorize. I didn't read the Quran that much. I was always working. I was always busy with work. Yeah. So I said to myself, you know, this year I want to make it my Ramadan memorable. So I wanted to set myself like, not an easy goal, but not, uh, not a hard goal that I can't achieve. Just like a moderate goal, like as in like, if I push myself, I can do it. So you had for yourself that you wanted one jizzah of Quran. Yeah. So what's that, 20 pages? Yeah. Okay, how much of that have you achieved? 10 so far. <laughs> Allah, mashallah, that's beautiful. So you've got 10 pages now. Yeah. Alright, and you've got 10 left. Yeah. Well, we ask Allah on these blessed days to make the next 10 for you very easy. Inshallah. Yaqub, what did you gain in this month? And what from this month do you want to carry on and continue on after? Inshallah, in this month, I actually gained the ability to, I'm not trying to boast, but connect to Allah. No, no, please, by all means boast and uh, just let it rip. Like, just <laughs> connect to Allah. Um, I would like to take away from here, during what we did during Itikaf, Inshallah, I want to continue Fajr in the Masjid, Tahajjur at night, Inshallah, connecting with our Lord. How does it feel to connect to Allah, Yaqub? It's an unexplainable love where you feel this connection where if you ask for something, you you don't guarantee you're going to get it, but 90% of the time you think it's going to be accepted, you're dry. Bilal, I want to ask you, um, have you found that the memorizing of the Quran has been getting easier as Ramadan continues? Yeah, alhamdulillah, it's been um, really, first I started off, it was really um, hard. I couldn't memorize that many like lines or, pa or in a half a page or stuff like that. But um, I kept on making dua that like inshallah Allah makes it easy for me to memorize the whole Quran. Mashallah. And like especially the, those 20 pages that I wanted to set myself. Yaqub, how do you plan on maintaining what you've gained in the month of Ramadan? Inshallah, <coughs> uh, the people who actually got me here to Itikaf was my brothers. And my brothers, they normally they influence me to do things such as go to the masjid for Aisha, etc. And inshallah, I want to go to Fajr with them Blame. and continue with what's happening at the Kaf Tajr, etc. So you plan on staying firm on the waking Step up fast. for Fajr inshallah. at the age of 15? That's a big goal, big goal, but wallah, it's very beautiful. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make that easy for you. Uh, Kanan, I want to ask, uh, you're, you're doing the 10 days in the masjid. So obviously you're sleeping in the mosque, you're there for 24 hours. Have you made any new friends? Oh, definitely. Yeah, and, uh, so many. And these I'm friends there. that you've made in the masjid, how do you compare them to the friends that you've grown up with? Um, is there a different friendship? Do you find uh, that it's a different relationship that you uh, have with them? Oh, definitely. It's, it's kind of... Uh, they're, they're more like family, man, to be honest. Definitely more like family. And um, uh, does it make you feel like you want to hang out with these guys oh, more after the month of Ramadan? I can't wait. Can't wait, to be honest. Yeah. Can't wait. But, but Bilal, I want to ask you, what advice do you have, let's say, to a young guy for next year's Ramadan? Do you think people can do things throughout the year to ensure that they make their next Ramadan fruitful? Just, uh, for example, me, I, I didn't put myself, like, I didn't set myself enough time to record in and to memorize. Like, even if you just, like, every day you gradually like build up as in like five minutes a day then the, the next day like you know you build up so slowly yeah. or you set yourself as in you want to memorize half a page every day and like that when it comes to next Ramadan you can know that you don't you want to revise like revise the whole of what you memorized Alhamdulillah well guys thank you so much for coming on and thank you guys for sharing you know um, sharing your stories with me what you guys are tasting is Iman and this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you know, you're probably asking, how come I don't feel this outside of Ramadan? Brothers, you need to keep something in mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, My slave, if you come to me a handspan, 
I come to you in arm's length. Allah says, my slave, if you come to me walking, hey, I come to you running. You see, what's different now is that this month you guys have made an effort. It could be small, it could be large. It doesn't change the fact that you've made an effort. You took a step forward towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, Yaqub, you're speaking about you're feeling the presence of Allah. Yeah. You're feeling that connection. Why? Because you moved towards him. He moved towards you. You know? Alhamdulillah. You know what I mean? And, 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 and really for you, Bilal, you're saying that, you know, Alhamdulillah, now I'm 10 pages in. These are 10 pages that I didn't have before. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we made the Quran easy to remember. But for those who strive, for those who want it, you know, Kanan, with you, we were speaking before, you know, you were speaking about friends, right? Many of us tend to have that, you know, look, I've got a lot of good friends, they're close friends, I've grown up with them the whole time, but they're not, let's say, the most practicing, right? When you come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you new friends, friends that you've never met before. But yet you love them more than, sometimes more than family and more than the friends that you've known all your life. Right? You meet someone in the masjid for two, three days and you love them more. You can never lose with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But now you guys have a challenge ahead of you. And the challenge that you face is a challenge that I face and is a challenge that every single one of us faces. And it's the challenge of staying firm and steadfast on whatever it is that we've gained. My brothers and sisters, a man came to the Prophet of Allah and this is advice not just for Ramadan, but for life. A man came to the Prophet of Allah, and I love this story because it's unique in many ways. This man is a companion. He already believes in Allah. He comes to the Prophet of Allah and he says, A Prophet of Allah, give me advice. I want a nasiha. Give me advice. But not just any advice. Now he's giving the Prophet of Allah conditions. And the companions didn't speak to the Prophet like this. But he says to him, look, give me advice. So that after this advice, I will never have to seek advice again. That's like he's really wrapping it up. This is massive. That look, I want advice, make it short and sweet. And make it enough that I can live by these words for the rest of my life. So the Prophet of Allah, he says to him, he says to him, Qul amantu billah. Say that you believe in Allah. Interesting. The man's already a believer. Our Prophet of Allah, he's a companion of yours. You know he's a Sahabi. He says to him, Qul amantu billah, say that you believe in Allah. And then he says to him, Thumma stakhim, and be firm and steadfast on what you say. You know, I find this interesting. I mean, if this is advice for life, then surely, you know, Prophet of Allah advise him to pray, advise him to fast, advise him to memorize Quran, advise him to be generous when it comes to giving money. But the truth is, what good is any of these great worships if we're not going to be firm and steadfast on it? You know, it's very easy to get emotional and it's very easy to be encouraged to get up and pray. And how many times have we prayed, you know, for two, three weeks and then you start dropping, dropping, dropping until we go back and we're not praying anymore. Why? Because it's this quality, being steadfast. Those that are steadfast, they're actually grateful and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, whatever you choose to start in your life, that's good. My advice is small, you know, slow and steady. Something small. Take on something little. Start this in your life. Establish it in your life. Move on with it. And then take something else on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in fact, it was, you know, it was when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to your beloved Prophet, to our Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to be firm and steadfast, you know, like in the Surah of Hud, the Prophet of Allah, he said, this stressed me out. It gave me gray hairs, you know. So, brothers and sisters, our biggest challenge now is, alhamdulillah, we've gained this beautiful, we've, you know, we've tasted this sweetness of iman. Now we want to carry that on. And we want to be firm and steadfast. And we cannot achieve this, of course, number one, we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, we have to step up. We have to step up, you know, we have to man up and say, look, this is my responsibility. I'm going to hold on to this thing that I've gained and I'm going to move on with it. You know, one of the best ways of remaining steadfast is to always speak about it. Whatever you've gained, share it with your friends, share it with your family and always talk about it. Why? Because the more you talk about it, then the more you remember it and the more you remember the promise you've made with Allah to say steadfast. So my brothers and sisters, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept us in this blessed month. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's forgiven all of us our sins in this blessed month. You know, for those of you that know, the Prophet of Allah says, if people knew what was in the month of Ramadan, 
they would wish that the whole, the whole year was the month of Ramadan. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again to accept. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us firm and steadfast on that which we've gained. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the people of paradise. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that every single one of you has a great Eid. A Eid that unites the hearts, that brings our families together. A Eid that changes this ummah permanently for good. And once again, thank you guys for coming into the studio. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.